Hello grade 10 physical sciences learners. In today's video, we're going to be looking at ionization energy exam questions. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. As soon as you do that, I consider you as one of my students and then you can join me on many more lessons like this one and I can help you with your tests and your exams and just getting the best marks that you possibly can. Check out the links in the description box below for videos on these topics and more exam practice videos. Let's jump right into this question. So we've got a table over here and it says study the table of first ionization energies and second ionization energies and answer the questions that follow. You'll see that there are elements listed here on the table alongside the elements are the two ionization energies, first and second. First things first, what is ionization energy? And that is my first question. Define the term ionization energy. This is giving a definition. Ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron from one mole of an atom in a gaseous phase or in its gaseous phase and it's measured in kilojoules per mole now kilojoules is energy and per mole means per one mole it's very important to understand what ionization energy means so basically it's how difficult it is to remove an electron from an atom so if it's difficult to remove an electron from an atom, that atom will have a high ionization energy because it's holding on tightly to its electrons. It doesn't want to let it go. So we need a lot of energy. It's very difficult to remove that electron. But you also get um, atoms that want to get rid of their electrons. They're like, please take my electrons because if you take my electron, I become stable. I can turn into a noble gas structure or I will therefore have a noble gas structure. So some atoms want to get rid of their electrons. They have a low ionization energy. The group of elements that have the highest ionization energy, I hope it comes as no surprise that these are the noble gases and it's because noble gases are stable. They're the most stable group of elements. They don't want to lose electrons. They don't want to gain electrons. They want to stay as they are. So it's extremely difficult to take electrons away from them. That's why their ionization energies are high. So that's just a little bit about what ionization energy is. But if they ask you for the definition, you have to give the proper definition as stated above over here, you can't leave out words. You have to say in the gaseous phase, you need to say energy needed. You should actually say per mole. So what I have in italics over here is actually the proper definition for ionization energy. And this is just a little bit of a description about what it is. 4.2 says use the information in the table to explain why metals form cations easily non-metals form anions easily. Now, before we get into using the table to explain why this is the case, I just want to remind you about what a cation is and what an anion is. Now, I hope you remember from previous videos of mine or maybe from what you've learned in class that cations are positive. Anions are negative. And the way that I remember this, and I have said this in a video before, cations Cations sounds like cats. Cats have paws. Cats are positive, positive. Cations, positive, positive. Okay, so I'll never forget it by using that way to remember it. So cations are positive ions, positive ions, positive ions. Anions are negative ions. So think of anions. Anions sounds like onion. Onions, if you chop them, it makes you cry. So that's how I remember the difference. Another thing that is important for us to remember with regards to these two things is when will we form a cation? A cation will be formed when a positive ion is formed and a positive ion is formed when electrons are lost. Okay, electrons are lost. Think about it like this, and I know that this is confusing for some people. Electrons are negative. So if you lose negative stuff, I'm taking the negative stuff and I'm losing it. I'm getting rid of it. You're losing the negative. You become positive. Anions, on the other hand, are negative. Anions form when we gain electrons. And again, think about it. Electrons are negative. So if we get extra electrons, we become more negative. We become anions. So the question wants us to explain why metals form cations easily. In other words, why do metals lose electrons easily? How can we tell that from the table? So looking at the table, let's pull out some of these things that we know are metals. 
I hope you remember that there's a step on the periodic table. I've highlighted it in blue here. Everything on the left hand side to the side, they're all metals except for hydrogen. That's an exception. That's non-metal. Everything on the right hand side are obviously non-metals. So back to the question, we need to explain why metals form cations easily. So they form cations, cations are positive, positive, which means we lose electrons. Which of these are metals? Well, group one is actually called alkali metals and group two is called alkali earth metals. So if you look at the, this, lithium, for example, is an alkali metal. Beryllium is an alkali earth metal. Okay, we've got boron, which is over here. It's a bit on the it's on the non-metal side, and the rest I've got here. These are non-metals. So lithium is a metal, and beryllium is a metal. And we must use a table to explain why they form cations easily, so they lose electrons easily. Now remember, if it's easy for you to lose electrons you will have a low ionization energy. Because remember, ionization energy is basically a measure of how difficult it is to remove the electrons from you. So if you easily, if you want to give up your electrons easily, if it's easy to take away electrons from you, then you'll have a low ionization energy. And that is exactly what we see when we look at the metals. The ionization energies for the metals are very low, which means it's easy to remove an electron from these atoms in their gaseous phase, and therefore they will form cations easily. So this is how you would answer this question in your exam. You will say that metals have a lower first ionization energy than non-metals. So we're comparing metals and non-metals. That means that they would rather lose electrons to form a positive ion. And I just want to show you all the sections, and I always tell my grade tens this, all the sections of chemistry are connected. So I want to draw you the alpha diagram for lithium, for example. Lithium has three electrons. So if I have to draw the alpha bar diagram for lithium, it'll look as follows. Lithium will have one S and it'll have, remember one S, one S has like one orbital like that. And then two S has one orbital like that. One, two, three. Now, if you take a look at what's going on here, if you know how to do alpha bar diagrams, and I do have videos on this, by the way, so check out the links in the description box below. But if you do an alpha bar diagram or an electron configuration or an orbital diagram for lithium, Li, you will see that lithium has three electrons. It fills up this many energy levels. 2p is completely empty like that. Take a look at this. Energy level one is full. Do you see that? Energy level one has two electrons. It's full. Energy level two is very, very empty. What energy level two has is this one lonely little electron sitting there. So lithium wants to be stable. And in order for lithium to be stable, its outer energy level needs to be full. But its outer energy level, energy level two, is very far from being full. If I have to take a highlighter over here, there's an empty spot, there's two empty spots, there's two empty spots, there's two empty spots, there's just way too many empty spots. So it's easy for lithium to get rid of this one electron over here. If it gets rid of it, so I'm going to erase it, if it gives it away, if it gets rid of that electron, do you see that it no longer has a second orbital, second energy level, sorry, and its outer energy level, energy level one, is full. So by lithium losing an electron, by lithium becoming plus one, by lithium becoming a cation, the lithium will reach stability, it will reach noble gas structure. So it is so happy to lose that one electron, and that is why it has a very low ionization energy. I know I'm going, not a little bit off topic, but I'm getting a, like into this in a lot more detail than you probably care, maybe, but it's because it really helps to understand how all the pieces of chemistry fit together. Okay, let's do the next one. Use the information in the table to explain why non-metals form anions easy easily. So remember anions is when you gain electrons. Now which ones in the table are non-metals? These here are all non-metals. And look at how much higher their ionization energies are. Much, much, much higher than metals. So what that means is they have such a high ionization energy that it is so difficult to take away electrons from them. They instead want to get extra electrons, basically to form an anion to reach stability. So here is how you would write out your answer. 
And just to show you so that I hope that this makes a little bit more sense to you, if you look at the half bar diagram for the fluorine atom. Now, how did I do that? Well, I'm not going to go into depth in it in this video, but fluorine over here has nine electrons. I hope you can see that. So that's where I got that information from. So each arrow represents an electron. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, the outer energy level one is full. The outer energy level, energy level two is not yet full. And remember, it must be full in order for the atom to reach noble gas configuration and for the atom to therefore be stable. And all of these things, all of these people want to be stable. Okay, think of it like that. Now, if I want to have a full outer energy level, if I want energy level two to be full, do you see that I only need one more electron? So it's easier for fluorine, for example, a non-metal, to gain an electron. It doesn't want to lose an electron because then it would have to lose this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and those two. It's way too many to lose. So it has a very high ionization energy because it doesn't want to give away electrons. It wants to gain one more electron. That's why when it gains that electron, it forms F minus. That is a charge of minus one. And that's why non-metals have what we call a higher electron affinity, just by the way. 4.3, last question, explain why lithium uh, why lithium has a second ionization energy that is much higher than the first ionization energy. If you take a look at the second ionization energies, they are all much higher than the first ionization energy. But in this case, we're speaking specifically about lithium. And again, I think it helps to refer to the alpha bar diagram to understand this fully. Remember, lithium has three electrons, so one, two, three. Its first ionization energy is very low, 520, because it, it wants to get rid of this electron over here. It wants to get rid of it because when it has gotten rid of it, it has a full, complete outer energy level. It is full, it is stable, it is happy. Okay, so that's why the first ionization energy is very low. But the second ionization energy is very, very high because lithium has now reached a stable configuration, a stable electron configuration. It does not want to lose another one of these electrons because then it will no longer have a stable electron configuration. It will be become unstable. It has a full outer energy level now. Another reason is because the first electron that was removed was on the outside far away from the nucleus, it was easy to pull that one off and get rid of it. But now, these electrons are much closer to the nucleus. And think about it, what's in the nucleus? Positive protons are in the nucleus. So those positive protons are strongly attracted to the electrons right outside of it, those two over here. So that force of attraction is very, very strong. So it's very difficult to remove one of those electrons because of the strong forces of attraction. So there are my two answers. I really hope that this video has helped with ionization energies. Please check out the links in the description box below for more videos like this on same, the same and similar topics. Can't wait to see you in another video very, very soon. Bye, everyone.